I have heard that Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, improves the accuracy of AI applications. That's right. A large language model may know general facts, like why the sky is blue. But it may know, though, details, like when a product added a new feature. RAG can help the model come up with more accurate answers for details like that. That sounds great, in theory. But how would I actually implement RAG in my application? One easy way of doing it is to let the LangChain library do the heavy lifting for you. Let me show you how. Welcome to the show, Miguel. You work in Google Cloud in the Mexico City office? Yes, I do. I'm a customer engineer at Google Cloud in Mexico City, helping businesses modernize their applications. I love working with customers because I learn so much. Uh, what did you do before you joined Google? I worked as a consultant at IBM, specializing in Kubernetes and business process automation. Great. Sounds like you have a strong foundation for solving tech challenges in business, Miguel. Yes, I have seen what works and what doesn't. All right. You said you'd show us how to implement RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation in an application? Yes, let's do it. This sample application will answer questions about the Cloud Run release notes. Cloud Run lets you build front-end and back-end services, batch jobs, host LLMs, and queue processing workloads without the need to manage infrastructure. And you're using the Cloud Run release notes as example data. Uh, this application could answer questions about any other texts, right? Yes. It could answer questions about any other large piece of text that you pointed to. Here's how it works. The user will enter a question in a web application. The web app will run a vector search in its database to find texts that are similar to the user's question. And that's the retrieval part of retrieval augmented generation? That's right. The web app will then build a prompt for the large language model. The prompt will include instructions for the LLM, like what kind of persona it should use. It will also include a text that were found in the vector search. That's the generation part of retrieval augmented generation. Then the LLM will compose a reply based on the prompt and the web app will return that answer to the user. Okay, uh, I think I get it. How do we build it? We will need to build two things. First, we will build a job that indexes the data. In this case, the Cloud Run release notes. Second, we will build a web application that can answer users' questions. It will use the index created by the job in the first step. And viewers can follow along on their own machines? Yes, there is a code lab that walks you through every step. Our coworker Vitze wrote it. Excellent. I will include the link to the code lab in the video description below. The code lab describes what you need to install on your machine and how to enable the right APIs. I have already done these things, so I won't go through them now. Very good. Now let's start building the indexing job. First, we'll create a database to store the index. I'll use Cloud SQL to create a PostgreSQL database. This will take a few minutes, so I'll keep going. And do I have to use Cloud SQL for this? You can store and search vector embeddings in another database product if you prefer. AlloyDB, Spanner, Memory Store for Redis, Firestore, and Bigtable all support it. Next, I will create the indexing job, which will run as a Cloud Run job. I will write the job in Python, and I will use LangChain to do some of the heavy lifting. I will install LangChain and Poetry for dependency management. Then I will scaffold a new launching app. Then I'll go to the new directory and install the dependencies. Excellent. Uh, that looked easy. Yes. Launching makes things a lot easier. Next, I will paste in the Python code that will index the release notes. How does the code do that? The Cloud Run release notes are available in a public BigQuery dataset. This code selects the release notes. If you are writing a RAG application, you might want to read your data from text files or some other source. Next, I create a database connection, and I use a PG vector library to set up a vector store in my Postgres database. 
Finally, I saved the release notes I got from BigQuery into the vector store. I like how Langchain and PG Vector hide a lot of the complexity here. Me too. Let me run this command to add those dependencies to my code. The code lab includes some instructions for creating a database and a database user in Postgres. I have already done those steps, so I'll deploy the indexing job. Here is the deployment command. Uh, now let's see. Uh, you deploy Cloud Run job. You use the source code in the current directory. You tell the job to run Python and uh, which file to run. And you include the database settings in some environment variables. That's right. And I include execute now. So the job runs right after it has been deployed. I can rerun the job later if I want to, of course. It will take a few minutes to deploy and run. Very nice. You've built the index. And now it's time to build a web application where users can enter their questions. Exactly. I have the code for it here. Lanchin has already created a lot of code for me. I just need to initialize the vector store. Then build my retriever that uses the vector store. This is the retrieval part of RAC. Then create the prompt template. Then initialize the large language model. And then I use Lanchin to chain all these pieces together. That's the generation part of RAC. Ah, uh, I think I understand the code, uh, at least on a high level. Uh, do we have everything we need here to deploy it? Yes, we do. First, I will put a database name in an environment variable to simplify the deployment command. Here is the actual deployment command. I will deploy the web app to Cloud Run in Google Cloud. It will deploy the source code in the current directory. Here are the database connection values passed in as environment variables. I'll set where to run this code and then make the web app open to the public internet. It will take a few minutes to deploy. Looks like the deployment succeeded. Yes, let's try out the application. I'll open the URL that Cloud Run created for us. This is the default web frontend that Lanchain created for us. This application is an expert in when different Cloud Run features were released. So I will ask when Cloud Run launched Cloud Storage Mounts. And there is the answer. Excellent. How did the web app get to that answer, Miguel? I can click here to view the intermediate steps in Langchain. Here is the question that I entered. My code ran a vector search in the database to find documents that are similar to the question. That search returned these four documents. So the large language model will only consider those four documents instead of all the release notes? That's right. That happens in the next few steps. First, the four documents are concatenated into a single string. Then, the code builds a prompt that will be sent to the large language model. Here you can see the initial prompt, where we tell the LLM to be a CloudRun expert answering questions. And here we have the four relevant documents we found in the database. And finally, here we add the user's question to the prompt. And then that big prompt is sent to the large language model? It is. The LLM processed the prompt and returned this reply. Here we can see the answer. January 19, 2024. We also get some metadata back, like whether the response might be dangerous in some way. If it is, we may not want to send it to the user. Okay, I checked the web page that lists the release notes for Cloud Run, and there it is. You can now mount a cloud storage bucket as a storage volume. Uh, January 19th, 2024. Glad the application got it right. It would have been a terrible demo otherwise. <laughs> That's a good point, Miguel. Uh, I will include a link to the code lab in the video description. And viewers can use this app as a template for building their own AI apps that use RAG? Yes, you can build an index of your own data. For example, text files, data you download from the internet. Here are some enterprise uses of RAG that I have seen. RAG can power chatbots and virtual assistants that provide personalized customer support by accessing customer data product documentation, and knowledge bases. This can lead to faster resolution times and improved customer satisfaction. That makes sense. I actually helped a customer do this uh, with RAG earlier this year. 
What other things have you seen customers use RAG for? Some other customers use RAG for knowledge management. It can help employees find the information they need more efficiently by searching across internal documents, wikis, and databases. Others use RAG for contract analysis. It can analyze legal documents, identify key clauses, and extract relevant information. And you can uh, replace this generic LangChain interface uh, with your own user interface, right? Yes. You probably want to do that if you're adding AI capabilities to your own application. Many applications use AI behind the scenes without making it obvious. For example, you might have an expense reporting application that suggests categories for expenses. It will display the regular expense reporting user interface, and it would use AI and RAG to perfill fields. Well, thank you for showing us how to build an AI application with RAG, Miguel. You're welcome, Martin. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions for Miguel or me about AI and RAG, please let us know in the comments. Also, do let us know what you thought of this episode. I read every single comment. Until next time. Yeah.